this is a three-part series on business growth. And, you know, this first part will have a little bit of review in it about what the technology can do and what virtual business cards might do. But really, this is more holistic understanding or holistic education on mobile-first strategies. How do we present to a company? How do we use it for our own company to be able to uh, grow our business, to be able to capture leads, to be able to nurture leads, to be able to get people through a buying cycle, to be able to generate transactions, and be able to grow our revenues no matter what it is that we're doing? Um, Again, that's me. That's my daughter, Wrigley. Rob Clifton, CEO of Avid Mobile. So some of you saw some of these stats before, and I just thought I'd throw them back out here. But I've got a purpose uh, in the conversation about them. You know, more people obviously text message, uh, dramatically more people than use Facebook. The average person doesn't even log into Facebook on a daily basis. Uh, what's interesting is that the average person looks at their phone an average of 150 times a day, but people are spending, the people that are Facebook users, spending 21 minutes a day on Facebook. So I'm combining a lot of stuff there, and I'm not necessarily saying one's better or one's worse, or am I, right? This is a great chart, and we put this up, I think, yesterday in the resources section of if you log in to the application, go to reseller content, go to PowerPoints. John put some new uh, PowerPoints up, and this slide is in there, but I think it's really a telling slide. You know, when you show somebody, hey, we're sending emails out, you may be averaging about 20% opens, you are only getting likely about one out of 100 people to actually click through an email and look at additional content or register for an event or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Um, You make a Facebook post of some kind and it's likely that uh, very few people will actually see it. Only about 12% because it shows up in somebody's feed and they don't go through their entire feed so they certainly don't see everything. Facebook wants you to pay to promote your services, right? But um, then click through rates. Only about one out of three people, so we just got the feet of one person. Out of 100 people, you only get the feet that have actually, you know, clicked through. Out of uh, a text message, right? You send a text message out, you say click here to watch this video, or click here to see the coupon, or click here to see our new products, or click here to see how, you know, this can benefit you, or whatever. And uh, click-through rates, dramatically better. Just, you know, just look at the, the actual representation of it, right? So, and again, we, you know, look at email open rates of different industries, you know, hardly anybody is getting even 30%, right? Or one out of three people. I went to a conference last night. I'll tell you about the conference in just a second. So, you know, uh, Google uh, saying mobile first, uh, a mobile, mobile, mobile mantra. And there's, and Google saying it, Forbes is saying it, many businesses are saying it. But yet when I call on businesses, they, they really do not have a handle on it. And I'm going to talk about a couple of those. I made a few calls yesterday to some uh, businesses that have been kind of in my pipeline for an extended period of time. And I'm going to talk firsthand about some of those conversations that I had. Um, so we know more people have a mobile phone than have a toothbrush in the world. I mean, you know, when the average person is looking at their mobile phone 150 times a day, And people say to me, well, we have email, and email goes to people's phones and they open it. Then why are only a third, you know, or 20% of your emails getting opened? Why is that? Well, because the email address they're giving you is one of their seven email addresses that they have. The the email that I give to businesses is certainly not the email that comes to my phone. Um, The only people that have the email that comes to my phone are the people that I'm doing business with and want to provide timely responses to. Uh, Sales offers are not... Um, that's not what I, I mean, that's, so that's not the email I give, which is part of the email open rates, but actually more people text message than even have an email address, which is kind of crazy as well. Obviously depends on your target market. Who are you actually trying to connect with though? More people are figuring out from a B2B perspective that, uh, mobile, there are uses for it. And one of the uses for it are, is a virtual business card, a virtual business card application for all of your sales force. Um, we know text messaging is seven times more popular than Facebook, 21 times more popular than Twitter. Um, so, you know, all of those mediums are great, but the most accessible uh, piece of technology with the greatest amount of reach, if you want to reach the most people, you want to connect with the most people, have the most accessibility, it's mobile, right? 
Um, another study, uh, John was on a MMA uh, conference, uh, MMA webinar a few, a few days ago or last week. I don't remember exactly when it was. Talking about how 73% of businesses say they care about their customer. I wonder about the other 27%. Who are those exactly? Uh, I would say that's probably our competition, but that's... That's my, that's my one shot at our competition. 73% of, of businesses say they care about their customer. 36% of consumers say the business actually cares for them. I hope you guys all think that we care for them. Part of this educational seminar that we're putting on is just for that, is to hopefully educate you and give you better tools and better firepower and motivation and everything else to go out and start kicking some butt <laughs> and growing your business and helping other people grow their business, right? Um, Consumers are not satisfied with how they're being, being communicated with via mobile. And this just represents when people say how they are actually are being communicated with, right? Um, businesses a lot of times say they're not using mobile because they don't think it's the best way to be able to communicate with their customers. Um, although 58% of companies use a mobile platform, many of them are using push notifications or something else. 86% of consumers indicate they're open to engagement with mobile messages. 86%. That's almost everybody. Yet only uh, very about 58% of companies actually do. There's a discrepancy there. But now let's go to text. Out of te the people that actually use SMS to communicate with their customers, this number falls to almost a third of that. To like, I think it's like right at 20%. Okay, story time. So I got lots of stories to tell. Not so many slides to go with those stories, but just kind of some stories. So here's me yesterday. By the way, that's not actually me, but that was a that's a befuddled guy at his computer with his coffee. Very much like me. I don't you really use a pen. I take notes on my computer. Actually, I do have a pen by my desk. <laughs> Why aren't 100 percent of customers saying they care about their customers or businesses saying they care? They I don't know. I have no idea. It's just the way it is. So um, when uh, so yesterday, I got two stories to tell. I, I was following up with, um, I was following up with some businesses that have been in my pipeline for an extended period of time, and these were some big businesses. Um, one was uh, the Mui Macho Group, and they've got lots of restaurant concepts. And I actually have the CEO. I've talked to the CEO on a number of occasions, and um, over the years, and I called him up again, and and it's been probably almost maybe a year since I followed up with him, to be honest. I've been, uh, so I called him and I got him on the phone and I said, you know, uh, I, let me see if I can even do it verbatim. You know, I said, hey, you know, it's Rob. We, you know, we spoke a year and a half ago or whatever. And he said, oh yeah, I remember. And I said, uh, you know, we, we do mobile communication. You've got customers coming in every day. We can give you the ability to capture their mobile numbers and then turn around and remarket to them send them coupons, uh, mobile coupons, almost like a, your own Groupon. And then it drives additional transactions. And he almost, you know, he kind of cut me off like some business owners do that are super busy. And he said, you know, he goes right now, he goes, we've got this person doing this and we've got this group doing this and we're doing email. And that's a, we've got 400,000 people in our email database. That was the number that he gave me. And he said, uh, you know, we're, we've really got it covered. And, you know, I'm, I've got something else I got to go to. So, you know, thanks for your time. And, and uh, I started to, you know, handle an objection. So I started to jump in like all of us do. And he cut me off and, and, you know, basically I had to let him go. I couldn't, I couldn't continue to, you know, he was running me off the phone. And so there I am sitting there kind of befuddled. And then I realized what the, what the real problem was. I did what I really teach people not to do. And, I teach people not to just go in and say, hey, here's some great technology or, hey, you know, going back to one of these slides and saying that this right here, when I state this information, that this is going to get somebody to actually have a conversation with me in more detail. This is not what's going to get people unless they're looking for it. And so this is where, you know, sales gets a lot more complicated or business development gets a lot more complicated. <clears throat> People are at all ends of the spectrum in terms of um, uh, where they're at in making a buying decision. When you are prospecting or, or cold calling or your sales team is cold calling, we know that out of 100 people, only 2% of people are actively looking for something to drive more sales. That's the truth. Out of 100 
business owners that you got on the phone, only 2% are actively looking for something to drive more sales right this second. That means the other 98% are not looking for it. And that if my opening is about, I've got something that will communicate and drive more sales, what do they immediately say? If you called me today and you said, Rob, you know, I've got some great deals on new tires. Well, I'm one of the 98% of people that currently are not in the market for new tires. So what's the first thing I say? Not interested. And then I run them off the phone as quick as I can because they, you know, bothered me and interrupted me. That is a big, big difference than being <laughs> 33 needs tires. Sure. <laughs> I actually think I'm getting fairly close. I think that's why I thought of that. I didn't lead with the, I didn't lead with the actual benefit. I had an inherent benefit in my mind but a longer story to get to my benefit. I felt like I had to be like one of everybody else out there and start the conversation by talking about what I did or who I am or whatever. And that's just, that's not even how I teach it. But, you know, we fall back into old tricks that we've done our entire career. And our entire career has been talking about, you know, what we do and the power of mobile and, you know, we've got these mobile first strategies or blah, 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 blah. But what is he? What is the only thing that's going to open his mind? What's the only thing that would extend the conversation farther than the sixty seconds that I get him on the phone? Anybody know? Jump in there. Jump into the chat. Tell me. I want to see what you guys have to say. What is the only thing? I mean, I kind of have it up there on the screen. I've got to lead with something that is a legitimate benefit. I've got to. Jump right in. Yeah, Mike's, Mike's got it right. Mike, you're all over it. I've got to be able to tell them right off the bat and then back it up. I've got to tell them right off the bat how I'm going to make it more money and then back it up with some real numbers and then back that up with the statistics. And then, you know, that's, that's where I get somebody's attention. Now, how do you do that in a way that doesn't sound cheesy? And that's where you need to be sophisticated in the way that you have a conversation with somebody, especially at the beginning when it's very, very important. So, you know, if my lead in was a little bit more like, Hey, you know, it's been a year since we spoke, but you know, as I, as you know, I work with large organizations internationally on mobile communication programs, but the bottom line is that a lot of our businesses that we work with are using email, they're using social, and they're using lots of things to be able to communicate with their customers. But what we do with mobile first strategies is we show you how you can grow a bigger database than any of those, communicate with them, and that will drive upwards of $5,000 per unit per month that you own. And you multiply that out times your 200 units, and we're talking about $200,000 a month of additional transactions, or annually or $2.4 million dollars or whatever the numbers are, and you've got those kind of figured out in your head. I've taught that lesson before. I've said before you call in a business, have an idea of the amount of revenue that you're going to be able to produce for them and be able to say that in your opening. Because if you're not saying a number that is actually going to make their eyes open a little bit, at least if nothing else, they've got to, they, they've got to have some curiosity there. When there's a couple things that I'm going to I'm going to teach you today that gives hopefully gives a little bit of firepower and a little bit of excitement into what we're saying and then of course you know we're going to be talking about virtual business cards and so okay. here's another story. So I get a hold of um, Magianos yesterday, and uh, Magianos uh, corporate people and the decision makers there and I'm on the phone with them, and the first I lead in very very similar and kind of talk about what we do. And they, uh, in, you know, in my 30 second, you know, opening or whatever. And, uh, they said, no, we've, we've got it. We, uh, we, you know, we have a vendor, we do text messaging. And so, you know, I think we're all covered and I go, okay, all right. Well, I guess if you think you got it all covered and I have the phone and then I sat there befuddled again, looking at myself thinking, what, 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 there's nothing that, you know, it's not really on their website there and I'm not seeing anything in their stores. They're not really sending anything out. So what is, you know, so what are they really doing? And um, are they, do they even really have it covered like they think they do? What I should have said immediately following, anytime somebody says, no, I think we've got it covered is, so you, so let me just ask you, 
by having it covered, you are currently driving 200 plus extra transactions a month from your mobile campaign per location or producing two or $3,000 a month of top line revenue from each of your locations. You've got a database of 4,000 people plus per each location you have, and that's what you're doing right now? Well, I wouldn't say that's what we're doing. Well, that's what, that's what we do is we teach people actually how to execute campaigns that are really going to produce revenue. There's certainly better comebacks. Okay, so I went to this conference last night, and this conference was focused on inbound and outbound marketing, specifically in, in terms of like um, how B2B companies have pipelines of leads that come in and how they drive those leads in and how they uh, nurture those leads once those leads come in and the various pieces of the buying cycle. And, um, and, and so it occurred to me that maybe I would share just a little bit of that information because what is SMS? And it's funny if you look at anything about inbound and outbound marketing, even the conference that I went to last night, absolutely zero mention of mobile. And this is 2015, people. You talk about an opportunity to still grow. Well, I walked up to the uh, organization, The I walked up to the speaker, just spent an hour and a half talking about inbound and outbound marketing. And I talked to him for three seconds about what I did. And, I, and then I said, you know, you didn't talk about any of the opportunities to be able to capture mobile numbers and remarket to those mobile numbers. We know the open rate is eight times higher. We know the click-through rate is 20 times greater. So don't you think that mobile database building would play into the inbound and outbound marketing strategy of any business? And any business. And he said, absolutely. He goes, in fact, you know, that's uh, something that I just, I don't really know exactly how it would work, but I'm interested in you know, figuring it out. Well, the guy's got 2 million business owners in his database, 2 million. He is just one of, I don't know, 100,000 people that you guys could call as soon as this is over and talk to about how they can offer mobile through their channels or how you could do a joint venture with them to take your product, virtual business cards, or your product, mobile coupons, or your product, mobile communication, text marketing, and mobile websites through the network of business owners that they already have and that you can tag team some educational webinars with them or you can be a part of their next conference and that you will share the revenue that you produce off of the sales by going out to their million or two million people. Guess what conversation I had with him? That exact conversation. Why? Because I know how hard it is and because I've been doing it for years. I've got six years in this space of driving leads to my website. How do I drive those leads to my website? Well, I do a variety of outbound campaigns like search engine marketing and SEO and that kind of stuff, which is a combination. <laughs> Some people put it right in the middle. It's a combination of inbound and outbound. It's outbound to begin with because I'm reaching out to those people, certainly my blogs and things like that. But, and then I drive them to my website. Well, now it's inbound. They're coming to me. Now I've got to capture those leads. Now once I've captured those leads, I've got to turn around and, and nurture those leads. And I've got to promote to those leads to get them to read my content, to watch my videos, to come to my webinars so that I can eventually do transactions with them. Because certainly there's people that research mobile and there's people that uh, then go off and do something else and get distracted. But if I caught their attention and I got them to fill out a form for a trial account or whatever the case may be, then I can continue to promote to them in the future. If I'm a retailer, brick and mobile, uh, <laughs> brick and mobile, <laughs> that's funny, well, like a, a brick and mortar location, I certainly have Biz, I have people walking in the door and I can capture those people, those individuals into databases and then gives me the ability to remarket to them, which is, you know, some outbound marketing that I potentially could do. Now, there's this co particular conference spent a lot of time talking about how there's all kinds of, <laughs> stop making fun of me, how there's all kinds of um, ways to be able to take the information of the data that you get from individuals from the outbound marketing that produces inbound traffic that allows you to capture those people and then match up data and then be able to communicate with them through uh, various channels and those various channels being 
um, social mobile, uh, social email, um, uh, and there's a lot of different social pieces to that, and then email, and then um, uh, even he was talking about direct mail, which you know is going to work for certain people. The bottom line out of all of that, there's another, there's another slide here. Where'd it go? There it is. The uh, <laughs> just move that one out of the way. I didn't get my transition in there. No big deal. Um, it's not really inbound versus, okay, and that's what a lot of people talk about. Um, one is not better than the other necessarily. It's all it all works in cohesion together. Now, what is the bottom line on this, and why am I spending so much time talking about it? Because it comes back to, so so during this conference, this guy puts up spreadsheets, and he puts up spreadsheets because he's a high level consultant for people that spend, you know, fifty thousand dollars a month in marketing and businesses that you know spend more than that and he talks to them about what those what those strategies are and how to better communicate with them and obviously all of those things he's a consultant on their communication channels and um he basically you know highlighted the fact that he works with some businesses and then he says that's he says uh well what is your budget and then they say well my budget is you know ten thousand dollars a month and i i just that resonated with me because the biggest you know any business that has existing revenues let's say that your business is does two thousand dollars a month right now or twenty thousand or two hundred thousand i don't care what it is if it does two thousand dollars a month <clears throat> what is the best investment that you could personally make with that two thousand dollars uh well you know, you could hire a support person. You could um, take that $2,000 and invest it in uh, some other technology. You could buy a chair for your office. Or you could spend it on getting $3,000 worth of business. You could spend that 2000 to get $3,000 of recurring. And if you invest $2,000 in marketing and you brought back in $1,000 additional dollars of recurring revenue... That's twelve. That you turn that into twelve thousand dollars a year. That one thousand extra dollars you turned into twelve thousand dollars for the year. So you took two thousand dollars and you turned it into twelve thousand dollars. Two thousand into twelve thousand. How's that for a return on investment? You see, we don't have a marketing budget. We don't have any budget left. That is the biggest problem that you face out there in this world today. We do not have a budget for that. Would you like to make more money? Then you have to put money into the single best return on your money of anything else that you can do. Could you use more money? Could you use more visitors? Could you use more traffic? Could you use more sales? Could your sales team uh, use more sales? Then you have to put your dollar towards what it is that you want in a way that will bring you the highest return on investment of anything else that you could possibly invest your money in because it has the highest open rates, because it has the highest click-through rates, because it has the immediacy and, uh, and accessibility of anything, the most accessibility of anything else out there. You have to put your money where your mouth is. You have to put your money into and this is I'm I'm just telling you what you have to be able to convey to businesses and the main message of anything that you're saying this has to be that main message and then it's how do you make it happen not um not you know should I make it happen the conversation at first is that you have to put money in their pocket and that you have to talk about investment not cost and that you have to talk to a person about their inbound and outbound marketing. <laughs> and that you have to talk to a person about what the single best investment anybody could ever make in, uh, in anything. You know, you can invest in housing or buy foreclosures. Or you can invest in the stock market. Or you can invest in a lot of different things. The single best investment you can ever make is putting that $1,000 towards growing your business and growing the numbers of transactions and bringing in new customers that will continue to buy from you in the future, bringing in residual revenue streams or bringing in new sales. That's what our tools can do. 
and that's why we work with companies like Avon and, and other businesses like that, because we focused on how it's actually going to grow their sales, and then we got them to have a conversation with us. How does the Avon tool work? The Avon tool is a, uh, a version of the, our, our regular virtual business cards, but I'm just I'm showing you the example. The Avon tool is, uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about philosophy, right? How is business done in the real world with outside salespeople, with direct salespeople? They're out there in the best in the world. They talk about their business every single day at every single event, everywhere they go. With Avon, people talk about their makeup, their um, their bag, um, how they smell. And they have those conversations with every single person that they talk to at the grocery store, at the t-ball game, and those kinds of things. And when they talk about that, they just say, hey, you know, let me show you where I got this. And they click the app on their phone. Then they have their person type their mobile number in their phone, and instantly that person gets that text message where they can click that link and it takes them right to the products and they say, yeah, click the eye products. And there, you know, that's the uh, lipstick I'm using. That's why my lips look so plump and luscious, right? The ability to be able to get someone right to your website and look right at your products or look right at your video is an unbelievable tool in terms of a face-to-face -face presentation. I use this tool personally at not the Avon one and my lips aren't as luscious or glowing as they could be if I use this product. That being said, I use the virtual business card tool every day. There's another picture of my daughter. Doesn't she look silly? American Home Shield. <laughs> All of Avon people do not have access to this yet. They're doing a new second launch in North America coming up next Friday. So another large percentage will, but still not everyone. They're still growing it. Um, American Home Shield. So this is just another example of they've got direct salespeople in every major city that go out and talk to realtors every single day. So they have a virtual business card product. They can walk and uh, when they are having a conversation with a realtor, they say, hey, let me give you my new business card. When they, when they hand them their business card, that person instantly gets a text message with a link and it takes them right to more information about American Home Shield, whatever they want those realtors to be able to see. They can also click that second link, save their information right into their phone, and now that realtor has their information. But, but and, and now, obviously, with any business, this gives them the ability to send out additional information to the databases over a period of time and drive additional transactions, awareness, loyalty, whatever the case may be. I'm using some examples that are different than the normal ones that you guys may be thinking about because there's opportunities everywhere with every single organization. I was uh, at that conference last night, I was talking to a call center guy and the call center guy works with like 10 technology companies. And I said, when your call center gets the ultimate objection and they're, you know, getting the, per the person is, you know, not interested at this time or has to go or has to do something else. I said, you know, I, I said, what about if you said, okay, that's fine. Um, could I at least send you a video so that you knew what it is that we do? And then, you know, that way you can have it and watch it at your own leisure. And, you know, if you're interested, then you can later call us back or whatever, but I'll let you go, but I'll just send you the video. Is that okay? Well, everybody goes, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We actually send it right to your phone. That way you can take it with you and watch it wherever you want. What's your mobile number? And then they send it to them right from their phone. So they just type their mobile number in a form right there on their desktop computer and boom, that person gets a text message with the video and now they've got that video right in their hand. And plus you can get them to opt in uh, by replying why to get future messages. And now we're slowly building a database, but at least we're leveraging something with that uh, you know, particular call center that's a little bit more than we've done before. Again, there's just applications for mobile strategies everywhere you look. An even bigger opportunity here for people like American Home Shield or Avon, we have companies that use us almost primarily for just messaging to their own uh, people. So with American Home Shield, they've got all of their salespeople out there in the field. Now they can send their own salespeople because their own salespeople, when they get the virtual business card, are going to opt into the American Home Shield database. And now they can send their own employees messages throughout the week. Uh, and you know, send them videos and, and encouragement and all these different things. 
But what we're finding is that more than twice as many people show up for conference calls when you send a text message, you know, 30 minutes before or five minutes before the conference call starts with the conference call phone number. They're having far more people show up for their webinars because they're sending a text message out right before their webinars start and reminding these people to attend. That's the reason why many of you are on this today because you received the text message itself and got reminded about it. That right there is going to, there's, you can't, you almost can't put a number on how they're going to do a better job of training employees, how they're going to do a better job of retaining employees, how they're going to do a better job of motivation. Getting twice as many people on to conference calls is hugely important to many organizations. Which sales organizations could you call today and talk about that piece specifically? Do you know any sales organizations that have people in every major city? Is it cable companies? Is it uh, merchant services companies, who is it and who can you call and who can you talk to about that? Again, um, you know, direct sales companies, people hit the app on their phone, potential clients type their mobile number in one form, but potential downline members type their mobile phone number in a different form. We're working with a company called uh, Jana King. I'll show you their stuff here in just a second. I think I've got it on here. Jana King has a uh, just a totally different industry that people wouldn't even think about. But Jana King has, is the largest franchise or of janitorial services. They've literally got thousands of franchisees. Now, what if you could turn around and charge each of those franchisees $25 a month to be able to use your, um, and this is actually one of our clients, would, you know, what if you could charge those franchisees $25 a month for them and all of their salespeople and all of their people out there to be able to have a virtual business card. And when they click their virtual business card, it launches their page. And anybody that they run into, the restaurant next door or the, you know, another business person, they say, hey, let me give you my card. And if you ever need any janitorial services or you want a free quote, you know, let me know. And they go, cool, yeah, we'll take a card. And they type their mobile number in. Instantly, they get the text message. They can click the link and go right in and get a free quote or read about them or watch the video about why Jana King is the best, all that kind of stuff. And But they go into a database. And now, since they're in that database, they can be remarketed to in the future. Uh, merchant services companies. When a merchant services company, which is just a great opportunity, by the way, any merchant services company is out there selling to regular businesses. They may already have a thousand businesses in their database. They can turn around and add mobile to them. So they can have mobile from you. You can, you know, for fifteen dollars a month, and you guys share the revenue, and then you guys make money on the upside of them adding, sending more text messages and things like that. Um, but a merchant services company, every one of their sales reps are calling on businesses every day. When you're calling on businesses every single day, get them to opt into a mobile database, and then send them out a message once every sixty days that says, hey, we can save you money on your credit card processing. Plus, we can provide you tools that help grow your business. And then all of a sudden, you're, um, that business is growing in more ways than one. I'm just, again, I'm just talking about different kinds of businesses. It doesn't matter what kind of business they are. And I've, I've said this before, anybody, realtors, um, network marketing people, merchant services companies, uh, anybody could utilize the virtual business card tools. And if you're doing them at scale, how do you price them? Well, and of course you should be doing it and linking right to your site and right to your demos. And it's easy to build them with a new vCard builder. And the vCard builder is meant to have one account with one vCard in it or maybe up to five. That's how it works the best. Um, don't put a bunch of vCards in just one account, by the way. We know how many businesses there are in any region. Do you know any of these people? You guys all know tons of these people. But I'm not concerned with you guys making a pitch to an individual insurance agent because none of us needs another $10 a month. What you need to be concerned with is talking to the entire insurance organization and getting them to provide it to each of their agents for $5 a month or $9 a month per unit. That's interesting. Talking to direct sales or network marketing companies or business owners or auto dealers that have big groups of people now, I'm interested in an auto dealer and sell them the program for $199 a month because, you know, 10 of those and that's, you know, I've got some decent residual revenue in there. 
Think of big organizations. Go to the top of those organizations. Talk to them about building databases and what that can mean to their inbound and outbound marketing strategies and where they should be investing their dollars. Where should you invest your dollars? Where you get the highest amount of return. That's where you should invest your dollars. I'm going to close out today by talking about one last time, and maybe I should talk to you guys about it every time. What's the most important thing that we can do during the day? The most important thing that we can do during the day. It's not write long emails. It's not produce PowerPoints. It's to pick up the phone, get somebody on the, on the phone, and then talk to them first about how you can make them a lot of money. In a, but you got to say it in a sophisticated way. You can't just say, hey, I'm going to make you a lot of money. Um, and make the calls. You have to spend your time making the calls. And I want you to make those calls to big organizations that have big upside. I want you to go after people that if they put, you know, uh, their 5,000 people on at, you know, $9 a piece, that you're going to make lots of money. Those are the calls that we should be focusing on and getting through to some of those people. You get through just through to just about as many decision makers as you will calling on local businesses. And book your two to three appointments a day and start closing business and start actually making some money. But it starts with making those phone calls. Out of every two to three appointments you set, you should be closing around 40%, 22 working days in a month. If you're closing eight to 13 new clients, that leads to a six digit income. And if you are um, selling to bigger organization, it can lead to a lot more than a six digit income. I'll stay on and answer some questions. Tell me bye on the way out. Um, you know, say uh, see you later or something. And then I'll, uh, I'll look for questions here and answer them.